Hello and a very good evening once again. This is Shivangi Chabra from Team Espousal. We've had some really interesting sessions so far. We are on ses session number 16 for today. And I hope you all are having fun. Uh, our next session for the day is upcoming trends in event technology. We have some amazing people and experts who will be talking to us about this topic. Uh, but before that, we have Piyush Gupta from Keystones India, who could not join us today, but has sent us a video. Let's have a look at that. Hello, everyone. Happy to be part of uh, Espousal and uh, you know, excited to talk about technology trends in the experiential marketing industry. So, uh, we've been in this uh, industry for about 25 years now, and we've seen all kinds of tech trends come and go. And tech event industries, one industry which has adopted technology in all ways. Right? Uh, but uh, in last two years, it's been a phenomenal adoption of tech, uh, and we'll all agree with it, right? Uh, we have AR, we have VR, we have you know gamification. There's so much that's coming, right? And obviously, a lot of people have consumed it, you know, lightly or forcefully. But the people who've kind of uh, enjoyed this journey, what happens from here? So, what we've seen is a lot of work has has been going in the. Uh, technology space trying to every day come up with something new uh, something more exciting but what's going to work right i don't think we've cracked it right the other piece is you know will it be you know a hybrid model or uh, not uh, there's no question about it that's going to be a hybrid model in the hybrid how much will be virtual and how much will be uh, physical is one has to see right uh, that also depends on uh, how we take the technology piece forward. Right? Uh, uh, while in these two years, a lot of uh, new tech has come up, right? But what we believe is there are four things that will make a difference of whether uh, or not whether, but how soon the uh, tech adoption will happen in this industry. Right? Uh, uh, look at it this way. So, so uh, the experiential industry has always been uh, focused on mm, making it look beautiful, right? So the tech has to look beautiful. There is no question about it. It has to engage. You you cannot have a technology which is not able to engage people, right? Uh, so that's there. The third, which is very critical, is the whole uh, data driven. We believe that the tech adoption will happen if it is data driven and i'll come to it what i mean by that and then the fourth is uh, fourth pillar uh, for success would be uh, mass adoption these are four things which i believe are very important if we want you know tech to be adopted in the right way you know across the industry right? uh, we all in the experiential marketing industry know that it, how does it look makes a very important factor right so so the tech, from an experience point of view, has to look beautiful, no question about it. And I think a lot of people have achieved that uh, in the uh, online space. Right? The second is the whole engagement part of it. You know, uh, how do you kind of bridge the gap between uh, online or virtual and physical? Engagement between that set of audience, where it is not, online is just online and physical is just physical right how do you kind of make it true hybrid through engagement will be with the very key there are a lot of tools available you know a lot of uh, apps available one should just look at it you know it will make a huge difference in uh, people online people not feeling left out right so that's there so engagement is the second part of it the third which I which I told it's about the data driven. The world is moving towards mass customization, uh, and this industry also has to move towards that. We cannot have a technology for only uh, you know which says okay I've made this now hopefully you know someone will use it right. No, it is moving towards when I log on to a platform right. Does the platform talk to me? Does the platform understand me? You know so 
uh, and then hence if that happens then i'm able to uh, spend more time on it i'm able to relate to it right it's it's a new world for a lot of people right uh, so that hand holding and that feeling of comfort has to come in uh, and that will come in through data where the ai helps you to understand the person understand the individual and then you know uh, guide the person on how to use the tech right that's there and the fourth thing which is a lot being missed overall is the mass adoption you know technology has been made it's made for a certain set of audience that okay people who understand tech can use it people who have high end high internet bandwidth can use it you know uh, high end devices can use it the the thing is if that happens then it's a long journey for uh, people to move there so the individuals will not move towards tech the tech has to adapt uh, for the individuals right and for that to happen i think a lot more focus has to go into how do i make sure that you know even if you have to reduce some features or some uh, elements from it but how can i have people who have lower bandwidth people who are not that tech savvy people who might not have larger uh, screens you know can still consume the content enjoy it and be part of it right? so i think that's where it is the moment we are able to do all this four together not missing out on either i think uh, this industry will be able to adapt uh, technology in a in a much faster uh, you know and more uh, integrated manner that's how i think uh, tech is going to play a role in the experiential marketing space you know thank you for listening and uh, have a great event Thank you so much, Piyush, for that. And uh, moving on, and in no particular order, I would like to introduce our panel members for today. We have Ashwin, the general manager for the marketing department at the NA Entertainment Networks. His leadership skills, organizational proficiency, and interpersonal skills have made him a truly valuable asset of the industry. We have Apoor Rajavat, senior manager at Dreamcast Global India. He's an experienced consultant of delivering events for different industries. We have Harshad Mansal, who is the Associate Direct Tag Labs India. He has 10 years of experience in managing experiential marketing campaigns and virtual event management. We have Amit Singla, CEO and Chief Strategist for Virtual Events at Scotch and Water Innovation India. He's a marketer, business events and experience expert, a tech enthusiast, a coach, consultant and a speaker. Last but not the least, we have Sumanyu Soniwal, CEO and co-founder of Wishtails India, the official virtual event partner of Espousal. Sumanyu is also the moderator for this session. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And now over to you, Sumanyu. Can't you? Sorry. Hi. Guys, am I audible now? Yes, you are. Perfect. Okay. So, thank you, Shivani, for the introduction. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. I hope you guys are enjoying this powerful platform. We at Bistales have put a heart and soul to provide you in this particular fashion. I'm Sumani Sonival, founder and CEO of Bistales, and I'll be moderating today's wonderful, wonderful panel. Okay, uh, before before we start off, uh, let's let's set you know what what we are going to talk about today. Okay, last two years for all of us it has been a roller coaster ride. Okay, for the entire event, even industry, a lot of things changed. Okay, many many of us had to pivot our business model as well. Uh, but the way when industry welcomed the technological advances in the virtual event, virtual production space, it's it's quite commendable. Okay, and today's panel is actually responsible for the seamless shift to such advanced virtual events that we are experiencing right now with this puzzle. Okay, I remember when we introduced this 365 to the event market to do to host virtual events that look exactly like real life events, and the entire event fraternity welcomed it with open arms. Okay, this is the way that event industry have evolved in the past two years. Okay, and as I always say, event uh, event industry is the most exciting industry to work for. Okay, um, you know, um, basically uh, they, they push us out every year. We have to bring out better technology, better concepts to the world. Okay, and that is what we are going to discuss today. Okay, how things are shaping up. 
okay what next what are the trends of the upcoming technology piyush rightly said about a lot of points okay uh, he unfortunately could not join us today but uh, his points were bang on with respect to what will take the things a notch higher but i have very very elite uh, you know panel today okay uh, apurv harshit me myself uh, we have been providing this tech for a long period of time and uh, you know for the past uh, uh, two years we have been there uh, you know providing all these uh, kind of technologies that people like ashwin amit you know and other pe uh, people from the event fraternity can utilize it and practically sell it off to our brands and make the events much more wonderful in the online space okay to to start off practically i will i will take some generic opinions from everybody okay uh, you know a very short overview of what you think okay is going to be the next big thing okay what do you think i know nobody can predict it okay and uh, uh, but want to understand your opinion okay what do you think is going to be the next upcoming trend in technology we are going to discuss a lot of exciting stuff on metaverses online events hybrid events but we will start off from harshit okay uh, harshit uh, your thoughts and then we we'll move on to everybody thank you sumanyu so uh, what i feel personally is uh, i think metaverse is definitely going to be the next big thing in the event fraternity not just in india but globally uh, we have seen already a lot of innovations being happening already uh, weddings happening in metaverse concerts happening in metaverse uh people investing i mean facebook changing its name to meta just because they want to fo solely focus on metaverse so i definitely and truly believe that uh, it is going to be a game changer and uh we are merged with metaverse is going to affect in a very big way uh for the for all for all of our events which which are going to happen not definitely in in a year or two but definitely when we talk about 5 years span i am very much sure that uh, it is going to be a very common thing which uh, most of the brands would be using because right now only a very few brands uh, i mean everybody gets really excited when we talk to talk about metaverse with them but very few are right now uh, deeply invested in terms of uh, in, in, in investing a lot of money in a metaverse campaign because uh, it is very hard for them to right now understand the entire roi point of view so uh, but eventually when they incorporate this into their marketing plan for e year on year basis so this is this will then definitely going to be a big game changer makes sense ashut thank thanks for that uh, apurv uh, what are your thoughts on the same thing hey uh thanks thanks to manu see i believe uh, virtual events meta and uh, ar or a uh, vr could be form factors of in the ways the events can be delivered but if we talk about the subject of the sessions which is upcoming trends the trends could be solving complex situations of an event with technology the acceptance of technology in solving your complex events could be a trend we have we as industry have come up so far in such a short notice of the last 2 years and uh, the expectation from the viewers and uh, from people in the industry would be to not to think about going back not to think to go back to the uh, conventional ways of events and the conventional formats in which the events used to happen so for me i think the future is lying in the hands of people who can drive ideas to use technology and for me event industry and event organizers are the strongest breed to bring the change we people in the panel are like um, we've done a lot to bring technology to events and uh, we've we've come up so far uh, with it but uh, the the real uh, people who can actually bring the change are the event event organizers and people who can decide what's going to happen at my event so acceptance is for me and solving complex things with technology is the future of event technology and uh, that's put my submission form factors would be any you do a 3d event you do a 2 event you do a vr event you do a mobile game based event you create a pubg environment of it and also my submission uh, to this would be the uh, the future would also be that the an event or a conference that happens for a two day should not finish in two days 
it should stay longer in the mind and people should build a community around it it should go longer beyond the on uh, ground days of it so that would be my point in this thank you thanks thanks apur so uh, as you rightly said that uh, you know the the power lies in the event organizers and uh, how they decide and uh, what they want the things to be so let's let's check out with the our uh, you know our fellow organizers who have made all these things happen in the past two years and uh, who have helped us out to reach our technology to m- multiple masses so ashwin what what are your thoughts upon it like what what do you think exactly is going to be the next big trend if nobody can decode it but i know you can so please yeah as apur rightly said it needs to be content driven there needs to be whole lot of ideation and innovation these three things play a very important role in uh, leading the upcoming trends uh, and it can be meta it can be hybrid whatever medium that we choose to take it forward but at the end of the day ideation and innovation only can uh, help in taking this together and um the clients are not going to be satisfied with the kind of things that we have given till now and they would want to explore and innovate and with great ideas and content from event managers along with uh, partners like all of you it can we can take it a long way and this is not going to die down this is here to stay and to only make it bigger and better perfect looking looking forward to it the same mashman uh, we also have uh, amit sir with us today okay amit sir uh, would like to know your insights on it like what do you think is going to be the most upcoming thing yeah so i i kind of uh, you know agree with ashwin on this uh, so i mean just to go two steps back what is uh, i mean even technology is nothing but a trend uh, which is which is driven by availability of the technology and audiences ap- appetite you know to 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 experience that experience driven by the technology uh, uh you know with with uh, us so much so you know getting more and more dependent on technology events are reflecting and need to reflect obviously uh, those changes uh, you know on one hand technology uh, at events can can be used to attract new audience uh, uh, the younger audience the millennials uh, and to increase engagements across the board so that's one word for me engagement to increase engagement and to attract newer and younger audience that's that's what technology can do but on the other hand events are also uh, the medium which is an antidote to technology to uh, you know a forum where people can actually come and meet in real life so uh, it's a it's a complex mix uh, of of you know where events find themselves today uh, whether whether we should do uh, do it do them away without technology but yes certainly uh, technology is not going to go anywhere it's going to help us attract newer people millennials uh, for events and create larger engagements uh, on board across any event perfect perfect so uh, as everybody very you know uh, very rightly said like how technology is going to change uh, the face of events okay um, uh, we have been seeing this particular trend going forward from past two years okay uh, people are more accustomed okay uh, the the culture that is popping up popping up no uh, people are doing work from home okay they 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 are not in the city where uh, the event might be happening and that is giving you know um, a new new terminology that is coming up is the concept of micro events and micro weddings okay uh, why why do you think this particular term is coming up and uh, how technology is practically helping in these kind of things to become wider okay and um, you know maybe maybe your thoughts upon is micro like currently what is happening 100 people event uh, 200 people event okay and the rest of the audience is connected via hybrid or the virtual event platforms okay is this a trend that is going to go forward or uh, is this something that is momentarily people are a little skeptical over the conditions people are not willing to travel so how is this thing going to expand um uh, maybe uh, apur and ashwin sir if you can touch base on that uh i believe uh, one could be economical ways of um, doing a event could be use of technology but uh, people as you said that people who are not able to travel people who are not able to who are not in the city and still would want to be a part of an event 
uh, could watch it and attend it virtually. Um, I believe that if we are able to make an event online presence or a digital extension presence as easy and simplified and engaging as a cricket match, we are there to win this. We uh, an event, an event, and a cricket match is still an event. People who are on ground, yes, do they do enjoy, but people who are watching it online also get the goosebump. So it's up to us how we engage them by showcasing them immersive scorecards, how we show them a ticker of uh, Gautam Gambhir is uh, completing his 4,000 runs. So all those engagements and bringing people together. And one thing that even cricket match is missing is if is, uh, people sitting in Hyderabad or people sitting in Delhi are not able to get each other's reactions, which, which people on ground experience it. But uh, it's, it's, it totally becomes our responsibility to make, make those events that much easy and simplified that people get the acceptance of it and people who are not on ground also experience it the same way. I, I personally would want to attend five conferences happening today, but I can be a part of one. But when I come back to my home, I still want to watch the sessions which I left at the venue. So that's my part. Uh, Ashwin, do you want to say Ashwin, something about um, it? Like, like more, more on, you know, uh, the trend of micro events coming up. Okay. Uh, this is, this is a common trend we are seeing everywhere where less number of people are attending the physical events. Okay. Or, or organizers or the corporates are looking out for smaller gatherings. Okay. And then streaming off the entire content to the other people. Okay. So what, what are your thoughts on it? Is it the trend that is going to go on or uh, very, very hard to say right now? So Manu, this is, uh, to answer your question, this is a momentary one. And slowly, if you see the trend is that people are getting back to work. So as and when they're getting back to work, so you'll have slowly larger numbers. Like very frankly speaking, if I look at a November forecast, I am getting bookings for about 2,000, 2,500 packs. Perfect. So Perfect. Which, is, which is still 75% uh, of the capacity and the streaming is going to go on. So even though we might not work on a, a, a platform based, but we will still look at a hybrid setup that will still go on because uh, every client has got a hang of what can be done. Even though people who are not able to make it, who are remotely working, can access what's happening here. And only thing is we need to now look at how to make this particular piece of 25% of the audience, how to make it more interactive. Like, like if you watch the latest web series and stuff, they've yeah. got the next level of making it interactive. True. So True. we need to look at how we can make this part of this capturing the 25% of the audience True. be a part of the event in one or the other way. Makes sense. Makes sense. Nice, nice, makes sense. Uh, so going going forward with this, okay, uh, uh, we have been speaking about what we have been seeing in terms of the trends. Okay, I would like to know, uh, you know, uh, next Harshit and Namit sir's uh, opinion on, let's say, for example, we are talking about the, a lot of things have opened up in on ground. Okay, uh, people are being connected from on ground and physical. What changes are we seeing after COVID? Okay, uh, people obviously are more susceptible to technology now. Okay, they 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 know how the technology works. What are the exact changes that we are seeing in an on-ground event with respect to technology? Okay, um, uh, again, Harsha, this is your department for the experiential tech that is happening on ground. Okay, and uh, I would also like to understand from all of you, like how event apps are you know um, are coming up to the rescue. Okay, is event app a solution to the Indian market or to any other market in terms of the events or weddings okay where uh, you know people get uh, information in a snap on their phones they can get directions over there okay or any other thing any other upcoming thing that you have seen as a change after the covid that happened okay which you wish to discuss over here Hashit, over to you okay so I'll, I'll mention point by point so talking yeah. about the experiential technologies what we have i mean uh, we have uh, in particularly seen after post covid when the on ground events have started to happen so what, what I have seen personally is uh, there are a lot of older technologies which have again come up uh, personally uh, in the events. Let's say, for example, RFID technology for uh, have has been, I mean, uh, 
while talking to my clients uh, i have been i have seen that this particular technology which we used to do 10 years back this has again come up and people have started asking for it and people have also started accepting it the reason being uh, why i feel is because it creates a touchless uh, registrations uh, mechanism for uh, organizations and brands for their events <laughs> so pe- okay. people are definitely trying to uh, create new uh, innovations out of using technology but uh, on the other hand they still want to keep it as much as touchless so okay. they are looking uh, brands are looking for a mix of both both the things and uh, see overall if i talk about the basic function of using a technology in event is to create a wow factor right so uh, i mean the number of technologies can be anything we have to create different permutations and combinations from the existing technologies to create a new uh, product every time because there in in our industry specifically there is a fatigue like every 6 months brands want something new what is new so yeah. we have 10 technologies right so we so so in our r&d department we keep on doing this okay let us let us use a uh, pressure sensor let us use a uh, connect let us use motion Let's sensors and, and match technology and, and, and try to what 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 new can be created like yeah. for example a recent activity uh, in few very simple technologies we used and yeah. uh, we were able to create a massive pr for uh, the government okay yeah. uh, so simple led cube a uh, simple yeah. touch sensor and a uh, very basic uh, dmx light setup using yeah. all three things together and with a wow visuals we were able to create a very amazing uh, entire uh, built up product for for the client okay so okay. this is what i feel i mean we have to keep on exploring uh, with the given things which we have in hand Understood. and yeah. ar vr the these things and uh, embedded technologies mm. these things are definitely playing a very big role in the current product offerings which different mm. organizations have okay understood so now uh, amit uh, just want to understand like uh, how harshit said you know after after pandemic um, uh, people are more acceptable towards uh, rfid which were previously used like 10 years back okay um, um basically core the core usage that harshit said was uh, to make things touchless okay the, the, the there would be no queues before the event okay people can uh, you know get access without any issues Um, on the similar grounds, uh, event apps have been there uh, in the industry for a long period of time. Okay, uh, do you think that uh, now that the people are more acceptable towards technology, okay, now people have used a lot of virtual event platforms now, okay, people will be more comfortable in using event apps for touchless based things or you know uh, contact contactless transactions inside the events. What are your thoughts on the event apps? You know, could it be good? Could it be bad? Or there has gone or there is coming up what are your thoughts uh, amit sir you are on mute oh sorry uh, no uh, so uh, let me speak for both of both the things one by one yeah. uh, disruption like covid okay so what it has done so if i talk about a form, very uh, one of the formats which we do very uh, you know uh, highly uh, for our customers which is product launches so if you take uh, if you take that particular format disruption like covid and the technologies which has come uh, in 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 uh, during covid and which uh, people have adapted has given it scale okay so people today can do i mean earlier to do a product launch to, in, in a in a, a five city or a 10 city uh, kind of a thing would take a month uh, to do, do a road show kind of a thing but today i can do a grand show at one place and stream it to the uh, national audience in one go uh two hours and my product is launched through the country so that's what technology has done to us so it has given us scale it has given us speed of execution as well speed of reach of communication as well right so that's one place which i would uh, find is a big change and it is that will not go that is something where people will remain will continue to invest into uh, because it is giving them speed and scale both right and at at no cost at no cost but at the same time we need to increase engagement that uh, as uh, apoor said earlier uh, you know uh, like a cricket match people sitting at home also enjoy so much uh, 
okay it's a different kind of fun uh, watching a match in the ground and watching a match at home but then it is fun right but today currently in current format when event organizers do events on ground they get so engrossed into that event they forget about the audience uh, at home sure. right sure. so uh, that audience at home if we start creating some content as ashwin said content driven uh, you know some some uh, cues and uh, if we start doing that will really help secondly to coming to your uh, event uh, apps yeah. i feel the adoption of event apps in this country has been very poor uh, so uh, you know whatever said and done uh, european and american uh, nations have uh, done it done you know pretty well on that we have not really adapted to uh, those technologies i feel in fact if web based uh, applications are there they will do better like uh, you know uh, uh, yeah. slido or anybody like that web based applications will do far, uh, better rather than adoption of a mobile app for one particular event Exactly. Correct, correct, correct. It, it, the the so, entire process of downloading, you know, uh, one app for every particular event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abhur, please, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Please, sorry. Please, I tell you the, I tell you the irony about event app is that creating the uh, SRS and creating the app and installing it on, uh, uploading it on Android and iOS yeah. is a lesser task than making. For an organizer, making people download the app is exactly. a bigger task. Exactly, exactly. That that's the point. Yeah, and that that's that's there's there's there challenges. But that I think why, there yeah. is a solution to it that you create a mobile friendly web app. Yeah. And the uh, the the con of that would be that it doesn't uh, trigger quick notifications. That Push the notifications. solution yeah. of that could be that the notifications of a web app. goes on That's whatsapp it. or sms to the user that makes them a call to action that brings them again to the web app and interact so, yeah so again uh, event apps were useful didn't get adopted in india but i suppose uh, according to my view this is the time and like people are more acceptable to the technology you now this is the time because physical events people need information instantly okay uh, they have been adopted to virtual events they want everything there they want to know what the next session is going to be they want where my hall is how do i get and navigate to there okay who are the people who have actually checked in into the venue okay so they need to know all this the people are changing with instagram with quick notifications you know with quick feedbacks to them this kind of an attribute is changing in the industry okay now as as we are running out of time i wanted to uh, you know touch base on a very interesting topic that is metaverse okay i know everybody is filled up with a lot of views on it okay so um, i personally harshit also touched based on it uh, when, when we started off okay and uh, i want to i want to speak to ashwin and you know other people about it okay how do you think okay uh, now uh, when meta has changed its name and a lot of things and a lot of buzzword going around there's a bubble around metaverse okay everybody is practically every brand is talking about metaverse is it going to seriously impact the event industry okay uh, are events going to be today today uh, we are uh, i i i can send from amit is uh, you know not satisfied with what i'm saying okay but we will we'll come back to that okay today we are doing a spousal on a 3d virtual event platform okay can a spousal be done in a metaverse tech here okay is that how things are going to change around or this is just a fad nobody is going to go to metaverse the brands are not going to go there what are your suggestions on it ashwin i'll start off with you i'll take amit sir next i'd love to see that conversation happening metaverse uh, can be a expensive affair and something that uh, clients might not dare to invest right now as long as partners like you guys can come up with a parallel universe <laughs> to create something when we be are we are that way which is more affordable to a client to experiment and once they get a hang of it and then they are there so nobody knew that they would accept a 2d platform or a 3d platform starting 2020 right so Fine. and they are there right now so yeah. you give a content driven stuff and you give again i reiterate that you innovate yourself come up with something new which is more interactive right now still the interaction levels are not to 100% on the platforms so yeah. give them the metaverse of your versions 
you guys being the leaders in the industry on creating stuff i'm sure they'll take it and we are there to sell it <laughs> perfect uh, amit sir uh, you you were nodding your head like uh, you didn't agree with whatever i said with metaverse what are your thoughts upon it don't you think metaverse is going to be the next big thing or it's, it's something that you know people don't understand metaverse right now what do you think yeah so uh, undoubtedly uh, so my new metaverse will be the uh, will be uh, one of the next big things uh, no doubts in that but then adoption of that in the event space and event tech, event uh, environment event ecosystem is uh, you know where i have doubts uh, about see currently uh, the environment is exciting you know people want to get engaged to people want to know first of all what is metaverse how does how does things ha- happen there how, how do things happen there you know uh, but then so i feel people like you uh, you know the technology creators can you know create used cases about how metaverse can be included into different kind of event uses okay if that those used cases can be created the technology can be made affordable as ashwin rightly said maybe you will find lot more uses uh, in coming time but i mean with or without metaverse will become a big thing uh, in, in uh, you know in, in coming times now it depends on us how much of use we want to make of that how much of integration we want to do for our world uh, with that uh, is, is is what depends on us i think i think metaverse is a great uh, you know uh, a, a great opportunity for all of, all of us uh, as uh, ashwin sir rightly said okay the networking that is happening or the uh, users how they are perceiving or interacting with virtual platform is about uh, 60% of the experience how we happen how we do it in a physical space okay to make it a notch higher to take it to a different level uh, things like metaverse might be required provided you know uh, uh, we at vestils are going towards it we are being building our audio okay um, you know i definitely uh, my other partners will also be also doing it okay but i want to understand uh, from now you know from technical standpoint uh, from apoorv and harshit as well harshit has already stated his views on metaverse he is uh, he co tag up is quite big on it okay that is what he has been saying so uh, apoorv what do you think uh, yeah i don't think so you agree with me somehow um uh, see i would say the the usage and uh, of something come if there is revenue for the brand and revenue for the event organizer in it every product every technology that we introduce in the market needs to generate a revenue for that brand for which you bring attendees to experience a form factor be it a 3d 2d or a meta event i believe if that is our responsibility and we have to do something so that in the next session amit sir would agree to us that is mine uh, sumanyu's and harshit's responsibility to make meta that much simple that it is accessible on different type of devices you have to make it a mobile responsive and one tech company be it anyone who delivers a good case study on meta people are there to bite you but yeah. we need to first bring clarity in the market about what is the usage of meta in an event industry meta 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 everyone is talking we need to bring clarity in the market that how you can use it how your attendee will spend more time and engage with your brand by experiencing something in a pubg kind of an environment at your event how people are connecting with each other in a pubg kind of environment in your event that's where the revenue engagement all questions about doing anything virtual get answered the good output of a meta will be delivered so that's my submission for now i still believe industry is far to accept meta fully in the but there's no shy away it is the future there's no shy away to that but currently the important thing is to bring the clarity about it the um, the success fatigue of tech companies who were doing 3d virtual events is achieved you have to get into yourself some we have to get ourselves into some more grueling projects now what we were doing is fine but change is supposed to happen change is good and good things come out of change 
So let's just wait for the next change to come. Yeah, perfect. As rightly said, change is constant. Point, uh, frankly speaking, yeah, please, yeah. Oh, please, please, please. Change is constant. Very frankly speaking, right now, so yeah. you guys have to, unless wherever we innovate ourselves and make the best out of the moment, I think mm-hmm. we're there. Yeah, perfect. Maybe we have uh, people like Ashwin and Amit to support us uh, for, with whatever tech that we are creating, and uh, so I suppose whatever we create with Fly, uh, thanks to you guys, you have been supporting us uh, throughout. Okay, and uh, as Apu rightly said, it's uh, my task, Apu's task, and Harsh's task to bring uh, you know good platforms to India. get platforms to the world so that people can actually experience metaverse and uh, people uh, or the uh, the bubble around metaverse is dropped off okay and people understand exactly what metaverse is are okay what ownership of the internet will mean okay how events could be more interactive how how the brands can actually leverage on top of the experiences that they're creating okay how they are uh, generating revenues out of that okay uh, it was it was a wonderful session okay with you guys i am glad uh, that i spoke to each and every one of you okay uh, uh, it was lovely speaking with everyone i suppose i we have few questions coming in uh, question is for ashwin how do you think event app role plays in concerts and sports event will it Ease or make make it difficult uh, with respect to concerts and sports events. Will you think people will adopt uh, you know uh, event apps over there, or is it specific for the conferences? Is that suppose what Farhan is uh, you know looking out to ask? Yeah, we have tried before, and mm-hmm. that is a experimental journey with yes. respect to the apps. It mm-hmm. all depends on again the kind of level of interaction that we provide to the audience. Uh, say you get an artist live uh, onto your app before the before they go live on stage, that makes a big difference, and mm-hmm. the level of engagement again on these apps will will show the success rate of an app. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. And also, guys, um, one thing I would like to tell all of you: um, you guys have stood by every event manager in these times. and it's a big thank you to all of you who have innovated yourselves and you have stood for each and every requirement of an event manager or a client and delivered the best by saying that we can make this in india and show it to the world which is a big thing thank you guys for that thank you thank well, you ashwin for your kind words i also want to state that that two years of uh, such a large disruption in our lives we have sailed through these agencies these people uh, have sailed through uh, with so much of support and uh, technology creators like you uh, you know uh, we have sailed not just sailed through we have actually done pretty well for ourselves uh, yeah. uh, you know all of us put together and uh, you you guys took the lead and we have done really well for uh, ourselves all of us perfect Thank you. Thanks a lot for your kind words, Ashwin and Amit. Okay, means a lot. Uh, we we all three we we are trying to innovate as much as possible in the technology field. Okay, uh, there's one more question for me. Uh, what are the plans for Metaverse? So we're still journey going ahead. Farhan, hi. Uh, we'll be launching a Metaverse platform soon called Audio. Okay, but uh, that is up for a separate discussion. This is a panel discussion, so <laughs> we'll we'll conclude this now. Okay, and uh, post this session, uh, I interacted. I happened to interact with uh, Sam Panchmukhi from this. craft okay uh, he has he is a national strategist for this craft uh, unfortunately he could not be here today okay but uh, post this we'll be playing our my session with sam and uh, how we discussed on how this industry would be okay we have already gone you know 2 to 5 minutes overboard our time but thanks a lot everybody for joining us today and it has been a real pleasure speaking to you i'll connect with you individually with everyone after this call and uh, you know thanks thanks sir Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks guys. Thank Enjoy. you. Bye. What a great session and thank you everyone for taking out the time. But before we end the session, we have Sam Panchmukhi, national creative mentor at Wiscraft India, who could not join us today, but has sent us a video and we have a chat with Sam. Let's look at that. Wiscraft uh he's a national mentor at uh, 
uh, at Biscraft and uh, I've been a huge fan personally. Okay, uh, today I get an opportunity to speak to him. Uh, before before we move forward and before we interact with Sam and, uh, you know, I would first like to congratulate him for taking IFA to the Metaverse this year. This has been a very phenomenal thing that Biscraft and he curated uh, on his behalf and uh, practically, you know, transformed the entire thing that we are doing. So, Sam, sir, uh, today, thanks for joining us today and uh, would like to know more about, you know, uh, your, your role at Biscraft and, you know, how how even, how even technology is changing the event landscape altogether. Um, thanks uh, so much, uh, Sumanyu, for having me here. Even I am a big fan of yours. Uh, the way you kind of uh, grown from, uh, you know, doing pre-function technology to what you've been able to achieve in the digital space. Um, you, one of the one of the interesting things that are hap that's happening right now in, in um, uh, technology space, of course, the buzzword is metaverse, and yes, Alpha has gone on to the metaverse uh, platform. Uh, we launched the metaverse platform. It's still work in progress, but um, the team that is working on it has been working diligently to make sure that entire thing is actually it comes to a stage where people are going to be experiencing. Uh, the the entire idea of what an IFA stands for. It's not just the award ceremony. It's, the metaverse is is a platform is a is a platform that allows you to gamify uh, things, and that's what we're trying to do with uh, IFA as well. And uh, it's um, it's as I said, it's a work in progress and, and something that is happening. And I'm quite excited to be here, uh, part of this entire event technology uh, session. Because um, I believe in many ways, um, Wiscraft as a company has um, uh, been a pioneer in this space in many ways. We've kind of led multiple things. And of course, there have been others, other players as well who also inspired us to do, uh, push ourselves in, in many ways. Uh, and being the, uh, I consider myself as a more uh, creative strategist and a creative technologist in, in the company, which, which primarily looks into all aspects of technology as to how technology can be integrated. And in our initial run, as we moved into the digital space, um, I was trying to drive that, if you remember, the in a you know, couple yeah. of years back. I was trying to kind of you know, make sure that the, the platform is up and we, we um, don't fall back in terms of, you know, waiting for the, the on-ground thing to shape up. Uh, but instead of that, we actually kind of moved into that space head-on, uh, to to get it into our system so that we can actually take it and expand on it and kind of you know make it work for our clients and customers and so on and so forth. Um, so it's it's an interesting space. It's an exciting phase to be in. A lot of things are changing and a lot of things are evolving as we you know, speak. Yeah, I, I remember Sam sir when when we you know in twenty twenty when we launched our virtual event platform. Okay, uh, we we seek your guidance on exactly where are we with Wis three sixty five and Wis Tales today. Uh, you know, with respect to the entire virtual event platform that we have developed, uh, a huge thanks goes to you and your team and giving providing you know some very critical feedback on exactly what was required to create such a platform. So. So now, now uh, you know, again, uh, two years has been into the entire virtual space. Again, the physical events are, uh, you know, uh, coming back and uh, with all its glory and all. Okay, what what do you think exactly? What How how do you think is the future of the hybrid and the virtual space moving forward? Like, uh, has the, uh, the landscape changed altogether for, you know, everybody in the event landscape or there's something that is left? What do you think are going to be the new thing in the virtual and the hybrid space? See, as as we uh, go further, the what what this entire two year pandemic has or two and a half year pandemic is still in the middle of it, but uh, uh, probably coming out of it slowly. And um, has done is it is uh, the priorities of companies of people of lifestyle has changed. A lot of people have actually moved into spaces that they have not they never thought they would, you know, purely from a working style and working environment and so on. And um, when that happens, obviously, when you're trying to kind of reach out to people and meet people and ensure that people come together, the entire approach changes. So I, I know what I see if I, if I have to kind of uh, look into the, uh, the uh, this thing and, and kind of say that this is what, th there is no particular roadmap as yet that has evolved. What has happened is we've been through a two year 
a cycle of, of you know, really extreme stressful situation where people have been uh, virtually distanced, you know, virtually forced to you know, work in distance and work from a distance and work together in that kind of an environment. To a scenario now, they're trying to slowly come back into a, a thing. So th those are things that are evolving from a work perspective. What are, what are events all about or what are brand experiences are all about? You know, primarily it's about getting people to connect with the brand, with the company, with meeting people and so on and so forth. So the, the, the crux of it continues to remain the same. How we do it as we go further, that is going to be something that is, that is uh, as, as work environments change, work lifestyle changes, our technologies will also change and accordingly kind of try to meet. I can uh, meet those those challenges. I, I certainly foresee a, a scenario where hybrid will be there, but you know there is a certain amount of um, what uh, I would call it as a it's, it's a it's like a, almost like a what is happening in the tourism space. It's the revenge travel which is happening. You will find a certain amount of uh, this thing where people want to meet each other. They want to kind of you know feel that touch, sense, sensorial experience will take precedence for a while in certain uh, aspects and you will find that as a uh, as a as a as a basic thing across you will find a lot of people would like to do that but parallelly i'm noticing a lot of uh, most of the clients and most of the customers are also willing to explore now see what has happened in the two year pandemic it has just accelerated the process which would have taken around 10 years or 5 years or 6 years or whatever and Everyone has suddenly gotten into a, this thing because everyone has the conceptual selling of digital platforms need not happen now because people are aware. Zoom has you know done a lot of things. A whole lot of other platforms have done things which earlier was not understood, has now been experienced. So some set of people will continue to kind of you know uh, retain that aspect of digital, and I think digital will continue to remain a very important touch point as a part of the entire solutions that you're you know, going to provide as you go further. And you know, various names are being attributed, though I have my own um, concerns and also my own way of looking at what a metaverse is all about. We'll come to that if you ask me about it. OK, cool. So yeah, so, so uh, practically what, what we discuss in our company, that is what we have said outrightly, okay, uh, the, the kind of tourism industry, what the kind of revenge traveling we are seeing over there, the same similar thing is happening right now. Okay, people need to go out, the people are, you know, they have been in their homes for past two years and they wish to go out, they wish to network, but uh, still a lot of segments are happening better virtually, okay, uh, people are able to connect to a lot more people from a lot more countries, especially, uh, you know, the expo that we are doing, the assault, you know, from 35 countries people are over here and they are now able to experience this which would have been a huge challenge otherwise okay so such things are becoming a lot better now um as as in you know when just to, just further, to add to that one you yeah. so you know yeah. when you just met what you just mentioned is companies have tasted value yeah. through digital okay now that will not really go away so uh you know overnight or will should not go away people They've understood that they can scale up, they can reach audiences without getting them down to a particular place in one area, one one destination, or so so on and so forth, yeah. and can still work in such a way that it is the the impact of the communication or impact of the exercise is retained. So I think that is where the you know that aspect of it should not be missed as we look further and and look into the the uh, thing where wherein. You will find that a lot of them will look at this value proposition that digital brings and they will continue to kind of you know nurture that and continue to kind of you know retain that as part of their solutions portfolio moreover and you know uh, as we as we are seeing the trend that is changing you know uh, the corporates uh, the work from home culture people are actually loving you know working with their families uh, they are uh, you know uh, able to spend the time with their families plus work for the companies okay uh, making the employees remote okay and to reach out to them to make them part of the entire corporate culture entire family virtual events are making make much more sense now okay after the pandemic has happened and obviously as you said rightly said you know people have progressed 10 years further because of this pandemic and absolutely everybody 
incorporated technology in their life set. Okay, as we move further and we talk about, you know, the upcoming things that can, you know, further scale this up. Okay, uh, we were there when, you know, uh, the physical experiential technology was there. Okay, then we moved on to the virtual event segment. Okay, what is next? Okay, how do you think Metaverse will basically transform this entire space? Do you think Metaverse is good, Metaverse is bad? I just want to understand your thoughts upon it because you have uh, recently done an exceptional work in that space and you will have your own thoughts. So, need to understand. Um, uh, so, Manu, my, my take on Metaverse is very um, brutal, purely from a perspective of how I look at it. Because what is being considered as Metaverse by a lot of companies in the digital space, not just in India, but across the world, and they kind of, you know, telling it because, you know, Metaverse is today's sexy what digital was, say, five years back or six years back. I mean, everyone used to say, I want a digital solution because that's the sexy word to be used. Today, a client comes in and says, I want my event to be on, on the Metaverse platform without realizing that what a Metaverse platform involves is much exactly. more than just, just, a, just a technology aspect of it. It is not just the, the creating avatars and creating an immersive experience. It is not just about kind of making sure that people are going to be logging in that we were doing in digital events also. So, you know, what is different from a the, so the metaverse is a, is an entire different platform where there are, everyone is an owner and no one is an owner kind of a scenario. It's a, it works on the blockchain, uh, you know, platform, the blockchain uh, uh, works. If people understand what blockchain is, then they will understand what this entire metaverse is all about. It's about, delinking yourself from the big tech companies and kind of making now big tech is saying that i'm going to invest in metaverse which is going to be worse it is not going to be meta worse exactly. it's going to be meta w o r w o r s e you know that kind of thing i would say meta is going to get worse if the big tech gets involved in it the idea was to delink web3 is about yeah. what web3 is predominantly to move into a space where there's nobody is an owner it's everyone is an owner but nobody's an owner kind of a scenario so blockchain works in that kind of a, a system. So today where people, clients are saying that I want to be on a metal, they're basically saying I want to be in digital. That's all. You know, predominantly that's the difference. If you want to really, really get onto a metaverse platform, then you have to be on those 10 to 15 platforms which are available right now or create your own platform, invest and create your own platform, which is basically creating a land space. It's almost like creating your own planet and, and so on and so forth, which has a, its own ecosystem and it functions completely seamlessly away from the existing web to kind of a approach where you're not really kind of, you know, putting it up on a AWS and that and this thing and so on and so forth. It is a complete, it delinks itself from the, it's still in the internet space, but it completely moves away from all the stuff that was earlier being looked at in the web two uh, platform that that is, i think is a is a basic core understanding so if if i have to be brutal today everyone is going on a lot of brands i will not mention the the, the names of the brands but they are uh, saying that we are already on the metaverse we did this in metaverse yeah. that, if the, if they basically done a digital uh, version of their entire this thing and and still not got them. what are you know, if you have to be there, you have to be there on a decentral land. You have to be there on a sandbox. You have to be there on those platforms. And if you go and look at their entire uh, this thing and what the big honchos of the metaverse platforms are also saying is, you cannot be on metaverse unless and until you gamify it. Because the entire metaverse platform is based on a certain amount of gratification model where you're working, you kind of do something, you get something, and then you kind of take that and then do something else. And the NFTs are also part of that entire ecosystem where you are using what you earn to, you know, you know, get those NFTs, um, which is yeah. non-fungible do tokens, if, you know, people, I'm sure, will, will be aware of this, which is, which is, again, making a mark. What I see as we go further, how is Metaverse going to be used? Is going to be used predominantly as a strategic thing initially and then probably move on to fairly immersive so from digital being an enabler digital becoming life is a huge jump uh, um, you know i remember almost 15 uh, more than 15 years back second life when it came into the system was exactly yeah, yeah, that yeah. right exactly it was, it was it was predominantly creating another world altogether 
but they were working on the web 2 platform now yeah. here the difference is that you're you're trying to kind of get on to a web 3 where everything is dealing from the main tech and so on and so forth that part of it is something that is going to be evolving it will take 3 to 5 years for a lot of companies a lot of brands across the world are investing heavily into the uh, the, the the entire real estate of the metaverse mm-hmm. if i may call that if you creating a platform basically you creating real estate of sorts where you allowing multiple brands or multiple experiences to coexist in a gamified environment so gamification is the most critical part if a brand is willing to do that and wanting to kind of get customers or clients or or for that matter employees or whoever else you want to kind of create this entire experience for gamification part of it is the most critical part of the metaverse and obviously move into a platform which is completely based on the blockchain technology yeah makes sense so yeah that that, that that's what uh, you know uh, exactly what i've been discussing with everybody a lot of people do not understand what exactly metaverse is okay and the brands who are investing into it for the companies who are investing in they would just want the first movers advantage to create a platform which will have again like meta again will have a lot of people on it and uh, you know practically uh, few platforms will be there that will be utilized okay it is exactly like second life with a metaverse world introduced now so that everybody is hopping onto this we had uh, multiplayer games from a long period of time and practically the web 2.0 applications of metaverse are practically a multiplayer game Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So you 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 are correct. Um, uh, in events also, we 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 will see the metaverse trend coming in. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, we are also building a metaverse platform. Okay, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll be soon happy to showcase to everybody. Okay, but uh, yeah, let let's see how it progress and uh, how things move further. Uh, for now, we have a little time constraint, Samsung. Uh, uh, it was a very delightful session with you. Uh, we I got uh, we resonated on a lot of topics, and I I love how the way you think and uh, what you you know provided in this particular session. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Um, and uh, if you have anything to say much further to people, please go ahead, and then we can conclude the session. uh thanks so much manu for having me here uh, digital and event technology per se i would say we just touched upon more, mostly digital aspect of it there are multiple other event technologies which are evolving and constantly happening both on ground and off uh, you know on the, in the online space as such um and you you uh, we are we are moving in a space where people are looking at multiple as see technology is as a is slowly moving away from being just a enabler to becoming a part of our life which is so a lot of things are going to be changing where ai is going to be making a lot of things simpler but also making it really in terms of the way kind of things function and so on and so forth i mean you uh, there are enough and more um, you know uh, people who are working on the ai space making it so seamless that you are tomorrow you may find a movie or a film being done with ai you know tomorrow you may find an event being done by ai where someone new is not required so we are we are moving towards a scenario where we constantly making um, with all due respects ourselves redundant and and as we go further and i am a hopeful guy i'm a positive person about life and about the way things move and i think we'll find a balance between where technology should be there working for us and not just taking over our lives you know as a part of the entire thing so let's see how it goes and where it goes interesting times ahead and yeah. uh, great to you uh, know talk to you perfect uh, same here same here and uh, uh, very beautifully said uh, from all the aspects sir um short sure, we thanks a lot again uh, i'm leave, again i'll placing it thanks a lot for joining us today uh, it was a very good session with you okay uh, we'll soon speak to each other again and uh, for now guys uh, if you have any questions please speak feel free to post it in the chat um, obviously sam sir would not be available to answer it, but i'll answer as much as possible thank you thank you everybody. thank you thank you so much sam piyush and everyone for joining us for the session today